Hey, it's Joe Fear from Get Thrive Cart. In this video, I wanna talk about all of the powerful, powerful ways you can use automated behavioral rules inside of Thrive Cart. There's a almost unlimited amount of things you can do. You can get extremely creative in these automated rules based off of actions that your customers are doing inside of Thrive Cart's uh, products. Or if uh, you have affiliates, there's a whole ton of rules there that you probably haven't thought about. I'm gonna show those all here and actually give you a bunch of ideas on ways to enhance what you're doing with these rules too. So let's dig into those right now. All right, so I want to kick it off with basically explaining why you would even need behavioral rules. Not a lot of people think about this, but at the end of the day, we want to automate as much stuff as we can in this whole sales process. It's just going to make your life easier. It's going to save you time. You don't have to hire extra people. And honestly, your customer is going to have a much, much better experience they're probably gonna buy more from you. Actually, they should and will based off of some of these examples I'm gonna show you. So I wanna start it off with just some examples here and break down what these rules are, what you have access to with Thrivecart. And then I'm gonna show you just inside of Thrivecart just to kind of reiterate uh, where to find these rules and how to set them all up. So you wanna automate as much as you can obviously, because it's just going to be a better experience for everybody. So there's a few different places these rules live. And one of them, and this is kind of the most obvious part, are these product rules. So you can actually set rules based off of everyone who interacts with your main products. And this is all done at the individual product level. So you have uh, the basics, which is based off of a product purchase. You could do something like add them to a, uh, an email campaign with one of the things, uh, one of the email autoresponders you integrate with Thrivecart. So in this example, it just shows active campaign and you can do this for any other type of autoresponder that's integrated with Thrivecart. And you can add them to lists, tags, automations, and things like that. Uh, you could do this with someone refunding a product. So you could do the exact same thing, just integrates with your email autoresponder and you can actually have something get triggered based off of if someone were to refund one of your products. You know, For instance, you might want to uh, try to save the sale. You can maybe downsell them, point them to another offer that you think might be better and try to still recoup some cash from that person or at least save that sale. There's an opportunity that... Um, you can maybe flip that around and uh, based off of that action, or if it's too far gone, then maybe send them somewhere else to free content. There's a whole bunch of cool things you could do. Abandoned cart, I'm gonna show you an example about that first. There's actually some crazy stats out there that most people actually don't buy your product on first touch or when they land on your cart. I'm gonna show you how to recover those sales and then another biggie is payment declines. This acts as a way that, uh, or it's a, it's a frustration point for a lot of customers if they get declined because there's a whole ton of reasons out there. It's not always, you know, they don't have enough money in their, in their bank account or in their credit card, but uh, you can actually trigger an email that gives them an option to maybe try a different payment method or maybe there's some other thing that you just need to assess, assist them with but that's one way to save a sale or at least have someone maybe not abandon that cart forever and never buy your stuff. So you want to make sure you're following up with these folks. So uh, so this is one of the examples I wanna show for the abandoned cart. So this relates to based off of someone buying or trying to buy a product, what you can do is actually save the sale with an abandoned cart automated follow-up. Now. A big stat that you probably aren't aware of is that 68% of people, and this is across the web, there's some studies out online who have studied this abandoned cart. So essentially when someone lands on your checkout page, 68% of the time, and this is not just Thrivecart, we're not talking about Thrivecart here, but just checkouts period online. On average, 68% of these people actually do not purchase and they leave that cart forever. So the ability with Thrivecart is you have these behavioral rules is if someone lands on your checkout page and actually does not purchase, Thrivecart's able to grab some of the information that they put in, namely their email address, and based off of some cool automated stuff that's happening behind the scenes on that checkout page, you have the ability to, you know, if you have this rule set here, you can actually follow up with an email to those people specifically 
and bring them back. Now, what I said down here at the end is just, you know, if you can create at least a one email follow-up for these people, you know, two or three might be best, but somehow enticing them back to come and complete their order. So you might want to tell them, hey, you know, we saw you checked out or tried to check out or that you're interested. Um, you know, is there any questions that you might have had, something that might have stopped you from completing your order? And you can even maybe entice them back with a coupon code to bring them back or some kind of bonus. You could put that in an email follow-up. So that's what's really cool. That's just one of the examples. Obviously, there's a lot you can do here. So another behavioral rule that's really cool are the upsells and downsells. Now this, uh, basically, it's, it's very similar, but it's in the section where you build the upsells and downsells. And essentially, you can trigger some kind of automated thing to happen. If someone were to purchase one of those upsells or downsells, if they decline an upsell or downsell, I'm gonna show you an example on that one there. That one's pretty cool. And then also if, uh, if someone refunds that product, the upsell or downsell. So there's a lot of cool things you could do with that. Let's get a little creative there. Purchasing is pretty pretty simple. You can send a congratulations or maybe it's a uh, you know instructions on what to do next with that product based off of if they were to purchase that upsell or downsell. And then the decline, I'm gonna show you a, an example here. So if let's just say for example, someone declines one of your upsells or downsells, you could set a rule and essentially have some kind of automated email that follows up and essentially gives them an opportunity to purchase again, maybe in like a week or so. Maybe you give them a little bit of time to get through the content they already bought, the other product. <laughs> but uh, maybe, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that actually see the upsell, and we see, we speak from experience, we get this a lot, and they might just not want it at the time, but then they're thinking about it. They're like, oh, that would actually have been a really cool, helpful thing. So you're giving folks an opportunity to actually get that upsell again. Maybe it's not for the same killer price that you had it. Maybe it's a one-time offer you had, but at least you're giving them the opportunity to purchase that again. More often than not, most people are going to take that if they're showing some kind of interest and um, you know if, if it's in line with the main product that they purchased. So that's something we often get in our support is are our people actually asking us to buy the upsell that they passed on initially. So you can actually automate that now with Thrivecart's behavioral rules and entice them somehow with another promotion or maybe it's the same one, something that entices them and gets them back uh, buying that stuff. Now the affiliate behavioral rules are very powerful. There's actually a lot more there and these ones a lot of folks don't think about. So if you have affiliates promoting your products, you can actually automate a lot of the follow-ups that are happening with your affiliates because you wanna keep them excited. You wanna get them pushing, you want them to promote uh, in a good way where there you know, are not high refunds, you don't have a lot of uh, bad customers coming in. So these automations are actually really cool. So you can automate follow-ups for people when they sign up, that's pretty, uh, pretty that's one that you want to have done is have some follow-up sequence when they sign up as an affiliate. Maybe you want to give them some instructions or some requirements that you want to send them prior to you accepting them as an affiliate or rejecting them potentially. So another rule is you can actually have a trigger based off of if they uh, get approved or rejected. And you could send them an email with uh, a reason why if they got rejected, maybe some other options for them or if they get approved, obviously you can send them details and instructions on how to promote. Now another one is making a sale. You can have it where affiliates actually get notified every single sale, that is really cool. Again, it's a motivating factor, so you can write something in there that just explains, hey, you got a sale, thank you very much, congratulate them and tell them to keep pushing and you know, keep doing the good thing there. Uh, you can actually get very creative too with some of these. So it's it's kind of like a multi-step and I'll show you an example in a minute when I hop into Thrivecart. But you can actually set rules based off of a number of sales or refunds, these are a couple different options, within a specified number of days. And that's an example I'll show you in a second here. Uh, so uh, I'm not gonna get into that without actually saying too much, but just keep it in mind that you can actually specify a number of sales and then trigger an action and say like, you know, your top affiliates are just crushing it. You wanna send them a special email to essentially make them uh, feel appreciated so they can keep doing that, 
that awesome work. And then you can also have a rule that is specified for folks who might have a certain number of refunds or a certain number of refund rate. And essentially, maybe you wanna send some follow-ups that help them to decrease that refund rate so they can send you better quality traffic. Maybe there's some marketing tactics. They, uh, they, they wanna see some examples, for instance. You can follow up with these folks or, or you can just tag them somewhere where you are. You can personally follow up. A lot of this stuff, it, it's an organization thing. So it's not like you have to have automated emails. It could be just notifying you of these folks so you can personally reach out to them. And this is that example based off of uh, some of the affiliate stuff. So one of the examples that you could do is actually specify a number of sales within a certain time period and then send an email to those affiliates. Like I was saying, you can actually congratulate them, send them thanks, maybe send them some bonus or some kind of cool thing. You can actually give them a higher commission rate if you feel like they're doing really well. If they're really pushing a lot of traffic in a small period of time, you know, maybe you can entice them a little bit more to do more of that for a longer period of time. So that is one of the ways I'll actually get in the thrive cart right now to show you how to set up that specifically, because it's actually really interesting. And it's an example of how you can get really creative with some of this behavioral and automated rules inside of thrive cart. And again, I feel like this is one of the more, uh, or the least talked about parts of thrive cart. And it's something that can actually save you a ton of time and make you a lot of money. So let's hop into thrive cart right now. I'll show you a couple examples. All right, so I'm inside Thrivecart right now, and we're gonna go to the affiliate tab on the top. And you'll see right here on the right-hand side, there's a rules tab. So this is where you're gonna build out those behavioral rules for your affiliates. And you can use, and if you don't have affiliates, by the way, don't just click away, because this is a good example of how you can do the other rules as well and get pretty creative. So you can see here, you know, we could set something up based off of all these different options we were talking about. But let's say they make a number of sales. Let's call it, uh, you know, we'll say 10 sales within the last seven days. So let's just say they're pushing really well. They're, they're making good sales. You could specify which product as well. You can actually add those folks specifically to an automated sequence, or you can tag them. Uh, you can do all sorts of different things that essentially will allow you to follow up with these people specifically. So just know that under these rule tabs, and you can layer rules too, you can see how you can kind of combine rules. You don't just have to have one rule at a time. Uh, so it's, it's actually extremely powerful, but uh, the way you would play around with those are going to that rule tab under the affiliates section and then adding a rule right here. Now, if we want to go back to the main products, what you want to do is go to the main page, go down to one of your products. I'm just going to choose this shirt example that I have. And on the top right, you'll see a behavior tab over here. This is where you're going to set those product uh, customer behavior rules. So you're going to click here. And this is where that drop down with all those options are going to be. So you can then um, and <laughs> you can actually specify per pricing option too. Uh, so if you have multiple pricing options on a page, you can actually specify rules based off of those as well. So, I mean, it's almost impossible to cover all the different ways that you can use these rules. So I would, I would recommend to get in here and just kind of mess around, maybe create a, a test product or two and test some of these things out and always make sure to integrate whatever email autoresponder you're going to use. And um, yeah, so you can play around with some of these automations and lists and stuff like that. And then lastly, I just want to show you where to do the upsells and downsells. Just know that when you're building upsells and downsells, they're going to live in these two tabs right here. And then within there, under the edit section, you are going to have that behavioral section again, right over here. You'll add a rule. And you'll see this is for upsells. You could purchase, decline, or refund upsells. And then based off of one of those things, you know, again, add them to a list or a tag or something like that where you can automate and follow up with them that way. So if you have any questions at all about these behavioral rules or you want to just get some kind of examples on how to do this even more creatively, feel free to reach out to us. Just go to getthrivecart.com on all the blog pages and all that stuff. There's going to be a little chat box that pops up. That's an opportunity. You can just start a chat with us and we always get back to you and try to help you as much as we could. 
or we can. And um, yeah, it's really exciting. So if you don't have Thrivecart yet, just go to getthrivecart.com. Make sure to sign up sooner and later. Best price is always on there. We give you a ton of bonuses to get started fast as well. And uh, like I said, if you just have any questions, also hop over to getthrivecart.com and there's some live chat type boxes there for you and we always respond to everything. So see you later. Thanks for watching. Talk to you in that.